Um, together with Lasse Hansen and Matthias Heinrich, I've been working on body weight prediction from point clouds in a clinical setting. And now I would like to present how we address this problem under the application of basis point sets. The body weight of a patient is a very important parameter in many clinical settings. For instance, it needs to be known to determine the proper drug dosage of a patient or an anesthesia. However, in emergency situations, a straightforward assess assessment of the patient's weight is not always possible. Patients might be unconscious such that they are not able to communicate their weight and injuries or mobility of the patient might prevent the usage of an ordinary scale. In such situations, the estimation of the body weight is still today often performed by clinical staff, although this procedure is known to be error prone. More accurate weight estimates could be obtained by inferring the weight from biometric measurements such as body height, waist circumference, or hip, hip, hip circumference, and so on. But the realization of these measurements is not only time intensive, but even infeasible in case of severe injuries. Instead, the ideal solution would be to estimate the patient's weight in a fully automatic and contactless way. And this can be achieved by deriving the weight estimate from visual sensor data, whereby we believe that depth sensors are particularly suitable for the task at hand for the following two reasons. Firstly, depth data and corresponding point clouds carry rich geometric information, which is essential for a task like weight estimation. And secondly, depth data guarantees the patient's anonymity, which is very important for the practical usage in the hospital. This leads to the following specific problem setup that we addressed in our work. As input, we consider a three-dimensional point cloud showing the patient lying in bed. And our goal is to develop some method which outputs the weight of the patient. This task has already been addressed before, whereby the most related work has been conducted by Christian Fitzner et al. In this work, the authors generate a mesh from the input point cloud and perform the weight estimation based on a set of hand engineered features which are extracted from cloud and mesh. Contrary to this work, our goal is not to use any handcrafted features, but to learn body weight prediction in an end to end fashion. A very popular approach for end to end learning from point clouds is the point net architecture, which could easily be adapted to the problem of weight estimation. The point net applies a shared multi-layer perceptron to each input point, input point individually and achieves a, a representation which is permutation invariant with respect to the input points by, apply, by applying a global max pooling operation. In order to reduce model complexity and achieve faster training and adherence times, in our work we pursued, however, a different approach to end-to-end -end learning from point clouds, namely the concept of basis point sets which we integrated in our, into our weight estimation pipeline. In this pipeline, we initially pre-process the input point cloud in order to segment the patient from the bed. Subsequently, the segmented point cloud of the patient is encoded with help of the basis point set, and the resulting distance or feature vector is then forwarded by a one layer fully connected neural network, which is optimized for the ta task of weight prediction. The core component of this pipeline is the basis point set or short VPS, which I'll explain in more detail on the following slides. The concept of basis point sets has been introduced by Prokudin et al. And its practical usage can be broken down into two main steps. First, we need to construct a basis by sampling a fixed set of basis points in three dimensional space. Here, it is very important to emphasize that this set of points is now fixed for all inputs from both training and testing data. Once we have constructed this basis point set, we can now encode a given input point cloud in step two as follows. For each of these basis points, we need to find the nearest point in the input point cloud and then save the corresponding distance between basis and input point in the distance vector, which can then be used for further processing of the point cloud. In our pipeline, for instance, instance, this distance vector is forwarded by the neural network for weight regression. When applying this concept of basis point sets to the weight estimation problem, we found that it was of crucial importance how we constructed the basis in step one, that is how we carried out the sampling of basis points. In the default setting proposed by Prokudin et al., the basis points are uniformly sampled in a sphere. 
And this leads to such a set of basis points where many basis points are far away from the input point cloud and thus capture less detailed information about the input. In a more generic setting with diverse inputs of different rotations and different shapes, such a basis is certainly very useful or even needed in order to cover all the different input shapes. In our case, however, we know that all inputs have similar rotations and similar shapes and thus occupy, occupy similar regions of three-dimensional space. In our work, we propose to include this prior knowledge about the input distribution into the construction of the basis point set in order to achieve a more expressive basis which can ca capture finer details about the input. To realize this, we suggest to sample the basis points from the distribution of training points. More specifically, we unify the points from all training clouds in one huge cloud and then uniformly sample the basis points from this huge cloud. As this basis alone is prone to overfitting, we subsequently add noise to each of the sample points. This results in such a set of basis points, which is much more concentrated around the patient and can thus capture much finer details about the shape of the input cloud. Okay, these were the main components of our proposed method. Let's go on with the evaluation. We conducted all experiments on the SLP data set, which comprises 109 subjects with such a weight distribution. For each of the 109 subjects, there are 15 such depth maps, which show the patient lying in bed in supine position while taking 15 different poses. We trained our method on 60 out of the 109 subjects and report results for the remaining 49 subjects. For evaluation, we compared the following five methods. As a first baseline, we estimate the weight of a test subject as the median weight of all training subjects of the same gender as the test subject. As a second baseline, we train a point net architecture to directly regress the patient's weight from the input point cloud. Beyond, we compare three variants of our proposed method. First, the base version of basis point sets, where the basis points are uniformly sampled in this field. Secondly, we consider a basis point set with our proposed adapted sampling scheme, where basis points are sampled from the training points. And finally, we consider the same as BPS adapted, but additionally, we take the median over the weight estimates from the 15 different frames showing the same subject. For quantitative comparison, we, cons we consider three matrices, namely the mean absolute error, the mean relative error, and the percentage of weight estimates within a 10% error range. So let's check out the results and start with the mean absolute error. Here we see the MAE of median and point net baseline compared to the base version of basis point sets. And we observe that already this base version almost halves the error of the median baseline and considerably outperforms the point net by around 500 gram. Replacing the base version by our proposed adapted sampling scheme is a further improvement of around 200, 220 gram. And finally, taking the median over 15 frames, it further reduces the MAE by around 500 gram to around 4.2 kilogram. Taking a look at the mean relative error, we observe exactly the same trend. BPS base outperforms median and point net baseline and the adapted sampling scheme at the median yield further improvements such that the top mean relative error is at around 6.4%. And finally, considering the percentage of estimates within a 10% error range, we again have the same trend whereby the top performing method, oh, sorry, top performing method reaches a score of almost 80%. Yeah, these were the main findings of our study. So let me conclude my talk by briefly summarizing our main contributions. First, we demonstrated that basis points that allow an effective and accurate end-to-end -end learning of weight prediction from point clouds in a clinical setting. Beyond, we believe that basis point sets are a very interesting tool for learning from point clouds in general, which can be useful for many other tasks as well. Secondly, we optimized the existing base version of basis point sets for the specific problem at hand by incorporating prior knowledge about the input distribution. And finally, 
the evaluation showed that our method with a mean relative error of 6.4% not only outperforms several baseline models, but also improves on weight estimates by clinical staff, which exhibit MREs between 7.7 and 11% in the clinical study. That way, our work demonstrates the great potential of deep learning based weight estimation in a clinical context and motivates further research in this field. From a methodical point of view, um, such future research could, for instance, include semantic labels or point descriptors into the BPS encoding. From a more practical point of view, we are interested in investigating the robustness of our method against variations of the input, such as varying patient positions and variations in the surrounding. And finally, going beyond the specific task of weight estimation, we plan to investigate the effectiveness of basis point sets in the context of other point cloud based classification and regression problems. At this point, I reached the end of my presentation and would like to thank you for your attention. And I look forward to discuss your questions and, questions and ideas about our work.